Hello, good people and friends of Franklin Park Art Center. I'm Deborah Kears, and I thank you so much for inviting me to share my shelter in place space with you all. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna start just kind of as people are logging on and coming here with this view that I get every morning when I go for my morning coffee of a whole bunch of uh, art friends of mine. Stephanie Desfondi painted that. This is Kelly Cameron's and Rob Ray's. They're from the um, Florence Thomas Art School in West Jefferson, North Carolina. This is a painting by Maria Hawk. She's a friend of mine. We are actually having an art show at the um, Art Factory in Old Town Manassas coming up along with, I'll show you some work by Kerry Waller in a little bit. This is by Paul Kaiser. And these are a couple pieces by my friend Sarah Siltala, Felicia Forte, Jackie Granford out in Australia, Tina Garrett, TJ Cunningham. So this is my little space that I start my mornings out with. And I thought I would just kind of walk you through what is Deb K Art Home Studios. This is the space that I teach in and also host workshops in. I have a couple of workshops coming up. You can't smell it, but I just baked, so I've got some yummy smells happening here. And uh, of course, I'm surrounded by beautiful art because that's the way I live. <laughs> but uh, this is Deb K Art Home Studios. DebKArt.com is my website. And I've got Joshua LaRock hopefully coming here in the end of June. I've got David Chaffetz coming in October, and they'll be teaching. I teach here as well sometimes. So I don't have a lot of workshops, but I have them couple times a year. This I wanted to show you. See this little thing right here? This is a little, you push this little button in on the side and you can move this up and down. This is a hanging system that I just got that I'm really excited about. It's by STAS, S-T-A-S. It's picturehangingsystems.com and I've got a couple gallery walls. I'm going to put more in my house. I just am loving on it because I don't have to do those nails anymore. These two pieces in the middle belong to Carrie Waller. She's a friend of mine who's a watercolor artist. The other pieces are mine. Again, I'm Deborah Kears. Thank you all for coming. I'm just kind of showing you around the place while people log on. And I literally have Deb K Art Home Studios in my home. So we've got some weird things here because I'm married to a guy who's into horror and all kinds of collecting all kinds of weird stuff, including an alien. How do you like that? Pretty funny, huh? And face hugger and all. I see there's comments here and I'll answer them all when we uh, finish this. I can't multitask very well anymore, so I'm gonna turn this around and you can look at me for a little bit. But again, I'm gonna take you down. We're, we're commuting right now to my studios. I'm gonna take you down to where I've been sheltering in place. And I have to say, it's pretty awesome. I think I I'm probably one of the more blessed artists in the world here that call these my studios, my home studios. Um, I'll show you guys a couple different things here. I've been experimenting with things. This is a painting in process. I'm going to be doing this series of paintings where I have uh, these, I don't know which, I've been calling them hidden painting series but these little uh, cabinets that I've been putting paintings into and I've been kind of hiding them the way that they did back in the 17th century where you would have to oftentimes open a cupboard or um, undo a curtain to see what was inside. So I've got a couple of these that I'm working on for a show, like I mentioned, that's going to be at the candy factory, now called the art factory in Old Town Manassas, hopefully in June and July. We're gonna talk about this uh, later today and also in some other shows that we've got planned. But as you can see, we've got all kinds of things staged here, boxes that are ready to be mailed. Hopefully that's gonna be happening soon. I've got this piece here. It's one of the paintings that is in the NOAPS, National Oil and Acrylic Painters of America, or excuse me, National Oil and Acrylic Painters Society. And I'm a signature member, and I'm also a juror in the NOAPS online show this spring. So um, this is one of the paintings, and when, when you're a juror, there's six other people. They don't let you jury your own stuff in, so who knows if this will get in. But this is a painting of my daughter 
from last year when she graduated college. I called it the graduate. And I love having this in my studio space because it's colorful and it reminds me of her and also just all the things that are out there in life that we get to enjoy even during these times when we're sheltering in place. You know, life is full of color, full of beauty and full of wonderful opportunities. So I appreciate this opportunity to show my space here via the Franklin Park Arts Center friends. These are some paintings that one was done by Trish Ratliff, a friend of mine, and one that I did in a workshop. This is by Juan Ramirez. This is what I surround myself with in my studio space. Paddle your own canoe that's waiting on a jury notification, as are some of the rest of these. Here's another one. This is a painting from when my friend Kim Minichiello, I tease, teasingly, but seriously, call her my hand model because she's modeled for me a lot. <laughs> but this is a painting that I did from when we were in France in a castle. And in the kitchen, they have these areas where you put your sword so you don't need your sword with you when you're eating. And she grabbed hold of it. And I'm like, oh, that's a painting. And I made her pose for me. This piece, Pop, this was just accepted into the New York um, Selma Gundy Club's annual members competition. It's the first time in history, I think, that it's been, well, it's got to be because we didn't have internet back way back. But it's the first time that it's actually uh, online, which is kind of interesting. And it got juried in. This is by my friend Maria Hawk. Again, she is going to be, along with me and Carrie Waller, it's going to be The Three Sisters, is a show that we're doing at the Art Factory in Old Town Manassas, and we're also going to be in Strathmore. These are some works in progress that I have going on, and paintings by my friend Tina Garrett, my friend TJ Cunningham, another piece by me. So you can see I've surrounded myself and my workspace with beautiful art. And I just wanted to take a minute to talk about some things that I really love in my studio. See this? This is a eucalyptus made wood brush holder. I love it because I like to kind of be organized but not so much. Like I like options, all these different brushes. I mean it's embarrassing how many I have. I'll turn around and show you all of them in a minute. But I like to be a little bit organized so these are the pieces that are pretty in pretty rough shape that I can use for different things. These are all of my selection that I can choose from while I'm painting. These are the ones that I'm currently working with. So I've got all that going on. And this piece is a work in progress that I'm doing from, I've, I've kind of passed the part, point where the life um, setup was doing me any justice. And so now I'm working from photos from my uh, laptop here. I don't know about you guys, but I really like when I'm painting to be able to see the painting and my palette at, in the same light. So it's in the freezer right now, but my palette slips into this gorilla box here. Just It's a, like a like a plein air painting setup would be outside. It slips right into here and then it's vertical and it's use, it's got, when I turn on my lighted magnifier, it's got the same light on it. See that? As my painting does. And so I, it, for me, it's just hard when I have my palette flat and I'm trying to compare the value down here, even if I'm holding it in my arm, to what I've got going on up here. So that's just a way that I've kind of arranged my space. I've got this seat that moves up and down. It's a little you know, hydraulic thing going on. And this is a Gorilla uh, easel, flex easel, I believe they call it. And it's a watercolor easel and it's uh, it can go flat. It can go in any direction. I mostly use it vertical, but you can take this thing and you can spin it. So if you want to turn your painting around, especially if it's a bigger one, no problem. I've got this little holder here that I've put onto this tray that goes up and down that holds my paper towel. So I feel like I've got, for me, the perfect setup for what I want to do. My son is a woodworker. He's actually a realtor in Richmond, Connor Kearse, but he made me these drawers that hold all of my paints, which is an embarrassing amount. I mean, I, acrylic, I do acrylic for my underpaintings, and then I use oil for my other steps and so I wind up with an oil painting in the end but I've got two of those uh, columns of drawers are oils and one are acrylic so yeah I kind of tend to hoard other people hoard toilet paper I hoard brushes and paints and frames and things and like I said that's my embarrassing brush collection but it works for me my son also made me this drawing table and the thing I like about it is I can set paintings to dry behind it here 
it adjusts, you know, down to flat and up to where it is now. So that's kind of cool, right? And then I've got this uh, collection of still life supplies. This is only the beginning. I won't bore you with all of my still life stuff, but <laughs> I've got an amazing uh, collection of that. There's, I want to show you this bicolor light that I use, and I believe I've got it plugged in here so I can show it to you. You see this? You can actually change the light up on it from warm to cool. It's probably not coming out very well. Maybe if I do it like this and show you over here. See how you can go warm to cool, bright to not so bright. And it was only 60 bucks on Amazon. And I just love it because what happens is even if you're not using it while you're painting, and I do paint a lot of times with you know light that isn't necessarily natural. And um, I love it because I can look at my paintings to see what they would look like in different lighting situations. What happens a lot of times is it goes to a gallery or a museum or a art center or whatever to hang, and they might have a warmer or cooler light than what I have in my studio. So far, I haven't been burned by it, but you know, if it's not the same light, it's not gonna look the same. So I like to give each painting kind of a once through and see using the different wavelengths what it is things look like um, after I finish them. This is a painting that I'm working on currently. Obviously, this is the still life setup. This is the cart I would roll it over to if I was actually working on it at the moment. Here's another one I've got going on, and here's another one I've got going on. So this is how I've got, this is actually my teaching space, and right now I'm mentoring people online, but I also do in-person mentoring when we're not being sheltered in place, and so this is where uh, I would bring people to work. This is also where I would hold workshops. and. Right now, it's holding my still life objects that would be wheeled over here on that card and into the corner if I was working from life. I really like to work from uh, drawings that are produced from the images on my laptop and also from live setups, but that's not always the case. You get pictures like this one of my daughter. You know, I had her in person for all of like a half an hour and then I had to do the rest of it from photos. So a lot of times it's just me and my laptop here working, but when possible, like these still life setups, I've got things rotting and changing all over my studio. And I always marvel at people who um, always talk about being so uh, nervous about things moving in their still life setup, like their flowers or, I mean, plein air painters have moving and people move and everything moves. So for me, it's no big deal to move my still life on and off of little tray tables. These are a bunch of little paintings that are just kind of sitting here going okay where are we going next what are we doing and I got this display from a card company or card um, shop in our neighborhood that was going out of business and I just have everything kind of hanging here waiting these pieces are going to be in a show that Bella Arte is having in fact I may be taking them down to Richmond this weekend or I might ship them I'm not sure how that's going to go but in, I believe it's going to be in July. And uh, these three pieces right here, it's a floral show. Bella Arte Gallery is in Midlothian, Virginia, near Richmond. These pieces are all pieces that are part of my solo show at Customs House Art Museum that's happening, hopefully still, in um, Clarksville, Tennessee. And that's at the beautiful historic Customs House Art Museum and I'm going to be having a reception there on August 6th, assuming all goes well. I did this piece here. This is, you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but the theme is America, all over America. So I did this piece here to show how paintings that are done a little bit larger, I use, maybe it's not obvious to you unless I zoom in, but I use different techniques and different methods for them than I do with the paintings that are done in miniature. See how I'm squeezing into this one tight? Well, it's only that big. See this little one of the airplane? It's only that big. So when I'm painting with the tools that I use that are not brushes <laughs> to um, create these small pieces, I'm working under a lighted magnifier and I'm using different methods. I'm uh, scheduled 
to teach on May, I'm slowing down here because I'm trying to check and see what the date is that I'm actually going to be there. Uh, da, 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 da. 10 to 4 p 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. May 28th. So one month from today, I'm scheduled to teach at Seaside Art Gallery. Actually, not teach. Um, give a painting demonstration at Seaside Art Gallery in Nags Head, North Carolina. And if you come there, you will see me using magnifiers and showing you some of the things that I do, some of the tools that I use to create my miniature fine artwork, which is a different animal. But again, it goes back to I like it because it's inviting you to experience art in a different way, kind of like what I'm doing with this series where I've got the hidden paintings. I'm going to be inviting you to experience art in a little bit different way. And I got these, these are um, used uh, store and antique shop finds. So if you uh, see any of these, they're kind of, I just thought unique kinds of frames and I'm just sort of collecting them until I can make things happen with them. So this is my studio and this, whoops, this is where I have been sheltering in place and what I've been doing mostly is really just the same thing that I've been doing all along, painting, mentoring. I just haven't been going to the art shows and openings and things like I would normally. One little thing that I'll share with you guys that's kind of different, I don't always tell people about, but this is my first pencil drawing, my first graphite drawing ever. My mom saved it, so I saved it. My maiden name was Wanzel, and you can see, I always have to look and see because I don't even remember, I did it in 1978, so when I was 16 years old. I've gotten better, <laughs> but I kind of like to put it keep it up there just to have stuff that shows us you know where we started from and then you know people that you admire I got this off of uh, eBay this is a etching by an artist Julian and um, you know to me it's just I love the, the shading and the beauty in that piece and kind of you know where I where I came from and where I want to go right in the same corner there so this is Deb K Art Home Studios, debkart.com, and I am Deborah Kearse, and I think I've probably used up all my time, but I am so thrilled to have had this opportunity to share my space with you all, and I've been really enjoying seeing these videos that other people have been posting on the Franklin Park Arts website. Thanks, Elizabeth Bracey, for inviting me to do this. One more thing I wanted to share with you guys before I let you go saved it for last. I went to Japan and I went to the Tamari Ball Museum and I saw Tamari Balls like this one that my friend Trish Harris gave me. So thanks for the shout out Trish and your lunch um, Facebook Live and thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day.